Having well-developed quads can provide an impressive shape to an individual's aesthetics. As well, the quads are incredibly important for performance in different sports and injury risk. The challenge though is many people struggle in effectively developing all of their quads. To fix this, we want to properly understand the quad's anatomy, their regional differences, their unique biomechanical functions, and how to practically apply this information in maximizing the development of them. The quadriceps, also known as the quads, are actually four different muscles. The vastus medialis, the vastus intermedius, the vastus lateralis, and the rectus femoris. All of these muscles run down the thigh and converge into one central quadriceps tendon, which inserts into the patella, which is then connected to the lower leg via the patellar tendon. The vastus brothers all originate on different parts of the femur, whereas the rectus femoris originates on the front of the pelvis. Due to this, all of the quads extend the knee, but the rectus femoris also flexes the hip. The femoral nerve innervates all of the quadriceps muscles. Generally, you would argue that since they're all innervated by the same nerve, that we cannot preference any of them. However, there's actually some research indicating that our exercise selection and execution can actually impact hitting the different muscles as well as targeting different regions of the muscles. Firstly, the femoral nerve divides into a proximal and distal branch. This means it's very possible that the proximal portion of the quadriceps and distal portion may be stimulated to different degrees. This is most notable in the rectus femoris, which has shown varying activation levels proximally and distally between activities that challenge hip flexion versus knee extension. Further, due to the rectus femoris being a two-joint muscle, its ability to effectively create mechanical tension during exercises where the hip is flexing is reduced. For instance, during exercises such as squats, the rectus femoris is not nearly as stimulated as the vastus muscles. In fact, research has shown that the rectus femoris does not grow well from squats, whereas exercises like leg extensions, where the hip is static, are a much more effective option for targeting it. This means that in order to stimulate the rectus femoris with knee extension type movements, we need the hip to be static, such as during leg extensions, which have shown great results for growing the rectus femoris, and other quad muscles. As well, we discussed earlier that the rectus femoris is a hip flexor as well as a knee extensor. When looking at when the rectus femoris gets worked best compared to the other hip flexors, it looks as though it has the ability to best contribute at full hip extension. This means finding exercises that load it most at a relatively extended position is going to be ideal. This could be done through movements like an active straight leg raise, where the individual has an ankle weight, or it could be done through movements like a reverse Nordic, where we maintain a hip extended position and have to isometrically perform hip flexion throughout. When looking at the best exercises for building the quads, an important discussion is range of motion. Norkoiv et al. 2014 looked at training the quads at either short muscle lengths or long muscle lengths and found that long muscle lengths resulted in more hypertrophy of the quads. Kubo et al. 2019 compared training full squats and half squats for 10 weeks and found that while not significant, the quads grew slightly more with deeper range squats. Further, a brand new study from Pedroso et al. 2020 compared full range leg extensions versus partial range, where they actually had two groups for partial range, one doing the top half of the range and one group doing the bottom half of the range. When looking at the amount of muscle growth the quads experienced, they saw that the full range and bottom range groups were very similar, with the bottom range seeing actually more growth at a few sites, whereas the top half of the range had less growth overall. These studies reinforce that where possible, we want to emphasize getting into a deeper degree of knee flexion when training the quadriceps, as they'll likely experience stretch-mediated hypertrophy. All right, now we've laid out all of the important information that we can use to select the best exercises. Let's get into them. First up, deep squats. The squat is one of the most researched exercises and time and time again, we see that deep squats can build up an impressive set of quads. Now, not all squats are made equal when it comes to growing the quads. Since that's our focus, there's a few key things that we wanna see while squatting. Number one, a more angled shin. As our knee travels more forward, it generally encourages a greater demand on our quads. Number two, a relatively upright torso. You're not gonna be able to stay purely upright, obviously, but if you're hinging significantly at the hips, you're gonna be loading your glutes and back more than your quads. 
Number three, a more forward toes position. I wanna be clear here. This doesn't mean that you have to have toes perfectly forward, but as you take your feet more externally rotated, such as past 30 degrees, it will decrease the relative loading on the quads. So if you're someone who squats like you're doing a play, you're gonna to wanna to work on that. If you struggle in executing an upright squat with your feet more forward and an angled shin, then I'd highly suggest utilizing some sort of option for elevating your heels. This can be a game changer for those who are trying to build their quads. In fact, I'd argue that most people should probably squat with heels elevated regardless. There's a reason Olympic weightlifters who often have incredible mobility and squatting prowess still use heel elevated shoes when they lift. If you want more information on that, I'll put a link down in the description box below on a video that we made on this topic. If you're wondering about front squats versus high bar squats versus low bar squats, it's not that huge of a difference as some people make it out to be. There's been a number of different studies comparing these and basically it doesn't really make a huge difference in regards to possible growth for the quads giving you still execute them the way that we discussed a moment ago. Some people are able to front squat better, others are able to back squat high bar better, and other people are able to squat the same way regardless. Pick whichever option you like and rotate through them periodically. Now, when people hear squats, they usually just think of the two foot even stance movement that we just discussed. However, while the classic back and front squats are very near and dear to my heart, I don't think they're inherently special or necessary for building those tree trunk thighs. Instead, we can also do split squats where we take one foot forward and one foot backwards, doing a semi-unilateral exercise. The split squat is a fantastic option for a few reasons. Firstly, it often allows individuals to check all of those boxes that we just went through on squats more easily. A more angled shin, a more upright torso, a more forward toe position. Secondly, since we're only training one leg at a time, our back is less of a limiter compared when we do regular squats. Thirdly, since we don't have our feet symmetrical, we have more ability to play with our hip and knee position. You can do them with a barbell on your back, a front rack option, or with dumbbells, or any other way that you'd like. In addition to the regular split squat, we can also elevate our feet. I'm sure many of you have seen the rear foot elevated split squat or Bulgarian split squat, which is a great exercise as well. One downside to it is that individuals often struggle in getting into a deeper depth due to the rear leg being elevated up high. Since we talked about how important knee range of motion is for growing your quads, it can be a bit of a downside to this movement. There are ways around this, such as not elevating your foot as high, but what often happens is that individuals end up loading the glutes and not necessarily preferencing the quads. In contrast, the front foot elevated split squat can be a great quad developer since it essentially reverses the problem. As you do the movement, make sure your focus is on going forward with your body weight, emphasizing that that forward knee travel, not just going up and down. This can be an excellent option for loading up the quads into a deep range. These squat and split squat options should work well for most people. I started off with these movements instead of going into exercises on machines like hack squats, leg presses, or pendulum squats, because most people either don't have access to these in general, or don't have access to them given the current state of the world. I will say if you have access to these, they can be a really great option for building the quads if you stick with the principles that we just discussed earlier. If not, the prior options should be your go-to. With that said, I do wanna show you an alternative for these. The DIY wall hack squat. Here I've set up with a foam roller behind my back, with my feet elevated on some bumper plates, and then a barbell behind my legs. This works really well and can light up your quads. If you don't have a barbell, you can do this with dumbbells or even bands. Now these different compound movements are great, but they have downsides of not necessarily effectively hitting the rectus femoris. To address that, we need to do some type of leg extension. There are a lot of ways that you can do leg extensions, and we actually made a whole video showing tons of options, 10 options in fact, for people, which we'll link down below in the description box, instead of going through all of them right now. With that said, I do wanna cover two variations which we discussed in that video, the reverse Nordic and the sissy squat. What I really like about these two movements is that they work on focused knee extension without the hip flexing, which is different than the compound movements, and they challenge the hip to resist extending, making the rectus femoris do an isometric action 
at the hip while also doing knee extension. This is important and something that is often missed when people try to train their quads. It's not necessarily critical, but it could be a missing link for those who don't seem to get their quads to pop. I'll link a few resources down in the description box covering these more in depth. All right, let's summarize. The quads are awesome. In fact, they're probably my favorite muscle group and I could have gone through a ton more exercises for them, but I didn't want to make this video too long. To truly hit them well, we can do compound movements like squats, split squats, lunges, etc. But we want to focus on movements where we can have our knee go forward, keep a relatively upright torso, and not rotate our foot out too far, and be able to use a good amount of knee flexion range of motion. Adding in some isolation type exercises is beneficial to comprehensively hit all of the quads. Having a hip flexion type option can be beneficial to help comprehensively hit the quads. And by doing an exercise like the reverse Nordic or sissy squat, we can double up on that by hitting hip flexion and knee extension at once. And that rounds out the best exercises for the quads. One last fun note, that while the quadriceps get their name due to having four muscles collectively, there's actually been some research to indicate that there's been a fifth quadriceps muscle found in that group. It's still being discussed as to whether or not this is a true muscle or just an anatomical abnormality in individuals, but if it does happen to be the case, they might be changing the name. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Quads!